The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the people saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and crossed to Capernaum to look for Jesus. When they found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, you are not looking for me because you have seen signs, but because you had all the bread that you wanted to eat. Do not work for food that cannot last, but work for food that endures to eternal life, the kind of food the Son of Man is offering you. For on him the Father, God himself, has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do if we are to do the work that God wants? Jesus gave them this answer. This is working for God. You must believe in the one he has sent. So they said, what signs will you give us to show that we should believe in you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate manna in the desert, as scripture said, he gave them bread to eat from heaven. Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the bread from heaven, the true bread. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said, give us that bread always. Jesus answered, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week you had a wonderful homily on the, the multiple of the loaves and fishes from uh, following the uh, young American priest. I hope you can remember that. And I thought it was an outstanding homily. Now, as he told you in the, <laughs> he said the summer, but we corrected him and told him it was winter. Uh, the, the five weeks of the summer, uh, we stopped reading Mark's gospel because Mark is a short gospel and we just run out of room in having it throughout the year. And for five weeks, we read chapter six of St. John over five different Sundays. So you have Father last week, you have me today, you have Father Hugh for the next two weeks and you have me for week five. So it's a, it's a bit difficult to cover what other people have said and done. That verse, uh, chapter 6, has got nearly 70 verses in it. So it's the longest verse in the New Testament. And it's all about the Eucharist, which is the source and summit of our life in the church. Uh, today, we find the people coming back after the loaves and fishes, searching for Jesus, who had gone across the lake. Uh, there's a little bit in John's Gospel we leave out, little passages you could skip over like Jesus walked across the lake <laughs> for other miracles that happened on the way. But And the people are starting to question Jesus about what authority he has to be teaching them. And at the, the heart of their questioning is, uh, is a disbelief and the beginning of a confrontation that will go on throughout the whole of chapter 6 in the gospel for the next four weeks. And that confrontation gives Jesus a chance to say, no, you misunderstood what I meant. When I said I am the bread of life, when I said my flesh is real food, uh, you didn't understand me. But Jesus doesn't back off one bit. And indeed, they back off. The story of the sixth chapter of St. John is that the Father said, 20,000 people, you know, 5,000 men not counting the women and children. Uh, he said the whole population of, of the lake at that time, they all were fed from the hand of Jesus at the miracle of the loaves and fishes. And at the end, there's only 12 left, which will be my sermon in a month's time. And Jesus said, do you want to go too? He had every chance to say, you misunderstood me. You don't know what I mean. You know, I, I was just saying that I'm a symbol. Bread, bread is a symbol. Of, he's saying he, could, he did not back down one bit. Oh, my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. 
He said, no, that's what I mean. So they start questioning him today. And it's a, an interesting study, and I've told you before, and it's good, good, as close as I ever went to writing a book. Uh, at least I thought about writing a book. But, but <laughs> on the questions that Jesus gets asked and how he answers them, there are four or five questions today in the gospel uh, that Jesus is asked by people. The first question is, where did you come from? How did you get here? How did you get here? Because they walked all around the lake trying to find where he was, you know? When, the, when they found him, they said, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus said, uh, he got a wonderful way. He, used, he never answered any of the questions. Uh, Jesus doesn't answer uh, insincere questions, right? Sincere questions, Jesus answers. Jesus answers every question that begins with the word how. Lord, how can I do what you want me to do? How can this be? Because I know not man, Mary said. If it begins with how, you've got a chance. If it's when, where, or why, I don't think you've got too good a chance of getting an answer. You'll get an answer, but not the one you want. Right? Every prayer we ever prayed is answered. That's Catholic teaching. It's Bible teaching. Ask and you shall receive. But if someone asks for bread, would you give them a stone? That's for another day. The first question is, where did you come from? So Jesus uses their question to tell them that you're not looking for me because you've seen the signs. You're looking for me because you had free feed, that you got plenty of bread, you got all the food you wanted. So then they go on from there and ask him, what must we do if we are to do the works that God wants? And that's a good question, isn't it? And Jesus answers, this is working for God. You must believe in the one he has sent. Now, I've told you before 20 times, the word believe in the Gospel of John is a very special word. Uh, it, we've got to undo some of our thinking of what believed means. I think if we were taught catechism in school, uh, we, we were taught that faith was to believe in the truths that God has revealed because of the authority of God who reveals and God cannot deceive nor be deceived. Can you nearly remember that question and answer? I learned it off by heart in second class. All right. Uh, the council changed. You know, we believe in Jesus. We believe not in doctrines. We don't believe in doctrines. We believe in the person of Jesus Christ. For a simple way of putting it, do I believe in the resurrection? I prefer to say I believe in Jesus risen. And Jesus says here, doing the works of God, you must believe in the one he sent. The word believe, the Latin word would be credo, that we might be familiar with that. I don't like getting into languages too often. But credo, credo means to dare in mio cuore, to give my heart to, to give my heart to someone. And believing is not just assenting to a truth. But giving our heart, and the, the word, actually the word believe is an old English word. It comes from the words to be in love, belief, to be in love. And Jesus said, working for God, you must be in love with the one that he has sent. So they said, that didn't do them, they're good at arguing. See, what sign would you give us to show that we should believe in you? What work will you do? Our fathers had manna to eat in the desert and he gave them bread to eat from heaven. What are you going to do? They've seen the miracle of the loaves and fishes. They've seen the hand of the Lord that feed them. Jesus answered, I did. again, he takes the question to teach what he wants to teach. I tell you most solemnly, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven. It was my father who gives you the bread from heaven, the true bread, the bread of God, is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said, give us that bread always. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never thirst. 
Again, for your exercise in this chapter, Father asked you last week to read chapter 6 during this month. The word belief comes up all the time. The word life comes up all the time. Jesus teaches that the bread of life. Um, next week, Father Hugh will explain to you and you'll read in the gospel, Jesus goes one step further, that he says, my flesh is the bread of life. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life in me and I and he and I'll raise him up on the last day. The word life, the word resurrection, the word belief. Yes, how can we do the works of God? We do the works of God by believing, by falling in love with Jesus, by giving our whole life to Jesus as our Lord and our Saviour. And he is the one who feeds us. The bread of life feeds us like your fathers were fed in the desert by Moses. They ate their bread and they died. But he who eats my flesh will live forever. And my flesh gives life to the world. This wonderful teaching, and it's part of a five-week teaching. And I want you to keep that in mind as we go from Sunday to Sunday. Yes, Jesus got asked lots of questions. At the moment, they're not confrontation, but they get to be confrontation when they say, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? It'll go on and on and on. Jesus had plenty of time to say, I meant it was a symbol, and that's all that I meant. But he never backtracked one inch, and he kept coming up at them as they came up to him. And the confrontation, he was prepared to even let the apostles go if they wouldn't accept the treatment, the teaching that he was giving. He let them go. 20,000, he let them go rather than change what he was teaching. But the ones that he kept, the 12, he said, Peter said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Amen. Amen.